Not everyone needs or wants to use non-destructive layer-based techniques. Sometimes you just need to open an image, make some basic edits, then save it back out. The developed persona is ideal for this workflow. This persona or workspace is associated with photographic raw file development, but you can enter it with any valid pixel layer selected. For example, I've just opened this visualization render, which has been saved as a TIFF file. With the main background layer selected, I'll click on the Develop Persona icon up here. And now I'm in the Develop Workspace with image adjustment panels available on the right hand side. To begin with, I could reduce the contrast slightly and increase the overall saturation. Increasing the black point with the contrast reduced allows me to compress the black tones and create a matte black look. I may also want to alter the overall temperature of the scene, which I can achieve by enabling white balance and bringing the temperature slider to the left. And I may also want to move the tint slider to the right to move the color cast away from green and more towards magenta. I could also enable shadows and highlights, then bring the shadows slider down to further crush those shadow tones and accentuate the matte black appearance. And I can bring the highlight slider all the way up to make the highlight detail more intense. I'll zoom in for this next step. Across on the Details panel, I may choose to add some sharpening. I'll enable Detail Refinement, drag the Radius slider all the way to the right, then increase the Amount slider by a small value. Moderation is key here, as I want to add some very fine detail enhancement without producing highlights around edge detail, known as ringing. I'll fit to screen once I'm finished with the sharpening. On the Tones panel, I have some additional options I can use if required. Enabling black and white will allow me to quickly create a monochromatic version of my image, and I can use the color contribution sliders to alter the tonal balance of this result. To return to a full color result, I can disable the black and white option. The adjustment settings are remembered, so I can easily toggle it to see a before and after preview. Curves, like the adjustment layer implementation, will give me a spline graph that I can use for finer tonal control. I can, for example, click drag to create several nodes that gradually give the image a boost in the midtones and highlights. Again, however, if I decide against this option, I can simply disable it. Finally, for a comparison between the unedited and edited results, I can use the split view option on the toolbar. This allows me to drag this comparison bar across the image and see the edited result on the left and the unedited result on the right. Alternatively, I could use the mirror view. For a side-by-side -side comparison, I may decide that the edited result has lost some of its brightness and impact. So on the basic panel, I'll raise the brightness slider. Returning to a single view, I can now click the Develop button in the top left to commit my changes and move back to the main photo persona. At this point, I can either perform further layer-based editing, or I can go to File, Export, and export my edited image to a new file. If you are editing a bitmap format, such as JPEG, TIFF, or PNG, do be aware that you can also use File, Save to write back over the original file. But use this with caution if you only have a single layer in your layer stack, as you won't be prompted before overwriting the file. And there we go, a quick look at using the developed persona for more intuitive slider-based image editing. Thank you for watching.